project is about how much sugar is in drinks. And I just looked at the back labels and I looked up how much is a teaspoon of sugar and four grams is a teaspoon of sugar. So I put them all into the bottle and taped them up. There's a lot of sugar in all of these. I'm surprised about how much sugar is in the smoothie because it's it only has the fruits, but it's all natural sugar. That's the one thing. After this project, I am really more aware of how much sugar is in what I'm drinking. I did my project on ancient Egypt. This is my board. This is a mask I made. I used cardboard and paper mache that then painted it all. This is about mummified cats and Kanapi jars and homeless, which, which the pictures are right there, and pyramids. This is King Tut's sarcophagus, the inner mold. This, this is a picture that was found in King Tut's um, pyramid, too. This is about pharaohs. The coolest thing I learned about and uh, in this project about is King Tut's too. Our project is about soda and Mentos. We are using Orange Crush, Pepsi, Diet Coke, Dr. Pepper, Original Coke, and Root Beer. Our hypothesis is that we think Diet Coke will lose the most milliliters because the more potassium, menazate, s and carbon dioxide gas contained in Diet Coke in combination with the gelatin and gum air back ingredients of the Mentos will lead to more formation of the foam. And surprisingly our hypothesis was false and Pepsi had taken the lead with 800 milliliters lost. We have learned that Pepsi had lost the most milliliters. As, As you, you can, can see, soda and Mentos do not go well with each other. Our project was which, Which diaper can soak the most? most water? The reason this diaper turns so fat is all because some powder called sodium polyacrylate. This, this, this powder, when we tried it out with water, it turned into this in just one and a half minutes. This changed the history in 1982. Because before 1982, diapers were cotton, um, and other stuff, and if we um, pour any type of liquid into the sodium polyacrylate, which is in a diaper, then this happens. Sodium polyacrylate can absorb up to 800 times. So our diaper brands were Tops Tippy Toes, Wegman Supreme, Dollar General Baby, Hubby's Loves, and Pampers. Tippy toes absorb the most. My project is about um, osmosis and solvent. Osmosis is when a liquid moves itself across a membrane one side to another. So I use gummy bears and some of them got bigger, but only one of them dissolved. This is water that got big and Salt water got a little big. Um, milk got a little big too. The vinegar dissolved and um, oil didn't really get that big. I really had fun doing the science experiment. Hi. Hi, we're doing electricity and so um, we're doing a motor. A magnet has a north and south end mm -hmm. and so the battery has the north and south end, which makes it, which makes the piece of metal north and south. So when north and north get together, they're going to attract. But when north and south get together, they're going to fly out of each other, which makes the motor start working. Here's a little piece of a hard drive from a computer. And if you look close, you can see our, our number, and that means resistance of whatever number. If there's zero resistance in a ball, then the very right is two, 
it gets dimmer, four, dimmer, six, very dim, eight, very dim, ten, it doesn't really light up. Resistance is something that pushes away, that makes it harder for it to happen. And then there's a conductor test. The rubber band is not going to work, but the penny is metal, so it ought to have to work. And it does the light. And simple also is another conductor. Conductor does mean that the electric current can pass through it. And now we're going to talk about the electric magnet. Um, and if we touch the paper clips, the nail is now electric magnet. The battery is um, helping it to be a magnet. And so when you press the button, it turns into an electromagnet, but when you don't press the button, it stops being an electromagnet. There is many properties of electricity, but the main two are AC and DC. DC is direct current, and AC is alternating current. For my project, I built a sun tracker. So this is an Arduino. It is a computer that does not have an operating system. So it's wired up and everything. This is a photoresistor. When they sense light, their resistance decreases. It goes down. So this here is the servo. It's more accurate than the motor. It can move to a desired position accurately. So I'll shine this light on it here. And it moves towards the light. So move it over here. Use this way. So this is what it does. This is the program right here. These are all the variables which set it. It can be used so that um, you can get, get as much solar power as possible with solar panels. So rotate it. Ro rotate it to face the strongest light source. Uh, this is a combustion engine we made, and we're talking about the four cycles of the combustion engine, the intake, the compression, the power, and the exhaust. So it first starts off with the intake valve, it sucks in all the gas, and then the compression puts it so it can't go anywhere on power. It explodes from the sparks, and then it sucks in all the smoke, and then the exhaust lets it out, and then it starts back at stage one on intake. We took, we took pictures, pictures to see how we build it, and we had to do like screws, screwdrivers. We had to use a bunch of materials and tools. It was a it was tough on some parts, but sometimes it was easy and sometimes it was hard. And, and it, it really, really works. works. about pH. <laughs> um, pH is how acidic something is. So we we tested eight liquids. Lemon juice, yeah. lemon juice of the liquids we tested was the most acidic, and Clorox was the least acidic. I actually thought Clorox would be more acidic than lemon juice. So you dip the litmus paper in the liquid, and you measure it, on a color chart. This, as you can see, is closest to two. These are a lot, these are the five reasons why pH is important. That helps because it helps you, it helps to know more about cancer and that could help treat it. And it's useful in using medicine. Well, I but noticed that most of these are too high and too low. For example, this is too high. This is optional. Actually, that's this is optional. Medicine. This is, you know, a, close to too low. This is too low. That's too low. That's too low. And that's too low. Um, we're doing a Rube Goldberg, so it's basically like a really complicated series of motion that gets a makes a simple thing happen. So in this case, we're trying to get this piece of candy into the cup to give to the person who's watching. We were inspired to do this when we were at a Brighton supported event, which basically taught you how like the different motions of a Rube Goldberg uh, works. So um, our Rube Goldberg is basically 
uh, based on gravity and our entire Rip Goldberg is on a slope to give the momentum. In the beginning, this train comes, hits this ball, which will hit the pool ball, which comes down this ramp, goes into this cup, it goes down there, hits dominoes, and gets the starburst into the cup. Part of the fun was sitting with my best friend, just staring at this poster board for hours and hours, doing trial and error for every little step. And figuring out like what worked and what we had to take out. It was really hard, but it was worth it in the end when it worked. So my project is on Costa Rica, and these are all items from Central America where Costa Rica is located. This is a lizard model that has been painted and carved from Costa Rica. And over here is a uh, traditional toy that some of the children in the island of Costa Rica have. Along the computer are worry dolls, and they, the legend says that they're actually from a country called Nicaragua, and the legend says that if you tell them each a worry and you put them under your pillow at night, they will take the worry away. And then this doll over here is a Costa Rican, uh, Central American, South American doll that this dress is what the girls wear on their 15th birthday party. It's quite, it's a passage to the families there who celebrate their daughter. And that is also another toy that Costa Rican children use. It is a top that you pull the string, you put it straight through the hole and you pull the string and it will spin. And then over here, this is a beaded pearl anklet that has been made from beads and it was handmade. And then this last item is a um, model of a lizard from Costa Rica that has been carved and painted. So we kind of did this volcano eruption project. There are two ways. You just do with the baking soda, the vinegar, and food coloring. Our second way is um, 10 ounces of water and eight small spoons of baking soda. So we also um, looked up facts about volcanoes in books and online. And so we found this really cool thing in a book called The Ring of Fire. And it's basically about the Pacific Ocean and the volcanoes that are um, surrounding it. As if volcanoes weren't dangerous enough, their ash can become electricity charged and cause lightning. We had a lot, a lot of fun, fun doing the science projects. Well, my project is about optical microscope. A microscope is an instrument used to see objects that are too small for the naked eye. And the most common of types of microscope is the optical microscope, which is used as light to imagine the samples. The first microscope was made in Netherlands in, 1620, in the 1620s by Cornelius Dremel. The, the actual name microscope was made by Gellio Gellius. Microscopes are you frankly used by scientists and doctors to work close and examine things such as cells that are too small, they are visible to the naked eye. There are three types of um, microscopes. There is common microscope, which makes things 1,000 times bigger. So here's an example. Then there's a second one, which is the stereo microscope. Uh, it makes things 100 times bigger. So this is an example of B. And then there's a third, third one, which is called the laser scanning microscope. It can make things 3D. I want to do this because I think microscopes are really cool. This project is about magic rocks. So the big question is, how does it work? I thought the rocks are going to grow from about one fourth to three inches. The materials are 70 degree water, uh, magic solution, and magic rocks. And so you cut the sides of a magic rock. Here's what they look like. They're small, but... And then you cut the edges of them, and then you put them in this little aquarium. And you can kind of see that they're starting to grow. The procedure was add magic rocks into an aquarium, then add water and solution. Mix, toge mix together thoroughly add water and solution in aquarium. This was the first time I've ever done these and I just want to see what happens. 
My project's about magnetism. The effects of a magnetic field is that it draws objects closer to the magnet and or leaves them there depending on what the object is. This is a paperclip project with the water and um, you can put the magnets in the water or on the side of the cup so you have to um, try to lift it up without touching the side of the cup, like that. And then I have a pipe cleaner experiment. When you lift up the pipe cleaners, because they have metal inside them, so that attracts the magnets. And here, I'm seeing what's magnetic and not magnetic. And here, the battery and the pipe cleaners are magnetic. And I also have the thumbtack that's magnetic. I think magnetism is cool because it's fun to learn about the magnetic field and what it does. My project is about tardigrades. They can also be called water bears or moss piglets. The different species are the giant yellow water bear, the uh, large carnivorous water bear, the tidal water bear, um, the turtle water bear, or the turtle water bear, and the balloon water bear. You can find them in moss, leaf litter, under ice, oceans, lakes, ponds, and meadows. They're found on lichens, moss, like anywhere that there's lots of like green and water. They are multicellular invertebrates. They can breathe through their skin. They have four pairs of clawed legs. They have been seen on every continent. They can survive to minus 458 degrees Fahrenheit and up to 300 degrees Fahrenheit. They can go without food or water for more than 100 years. Then they just have to like be added to water to like revive. Um, cryptobiosis is defined as a state in which metabolic activities come to a reversible standstill, which means they just become like dehydrated and become a ton. Um, it's like a death-like state and then uh, you can pour water and revival takes like a few hours. Um, we haven't found any yet, but there should be a tardigrade in there. Um, I did the solar system. I chose it because I think that there is a lot going on in the and there would be a lot to talk about. Neptune was discovered in 1846. It takes the moon a month to orbit the sun. And Jupiter is twice as heavy as all the other planets. Other planets. One of the coolest things I learned while doing this project is that it takes a lot of uh, patience and also it is um, very fun.